Have you been in a traditional Jewish wedding ceremony? Maybe you have watched some scenes of it in a movie or even on YouTube videos. Well, the reality is that the wedding ceremony takes place under a chupa, the traditional Jewish wedding canopy. Of all the traditions of the Jewish life, the one I believe is the most meaningful, is the least understood and appreciated, is the ceremony that takes place under the chupa. The chupa is a public display that the bride and the groom are now becoming husband and wife by symbolizing the home the couple are about to build together. If the hupa represents the Jewish home, would not it make more sense for the hupa to have four walls like any regular home? Instead, the walls are removed and four poles hold up the hupa canopy. This design comes to remind us of the original Jewish couple from the Bible, Abraham and Sarah. We are told that Abraham and Sarah live in a tent. Although in their day, people were living in stone structures, despite being very wealthy, Abraham and Sarah decide to live in a more portable structure so they could keep moving around to different population centers. According to the Jewish tradition, they did this so they could fulfill the incredible mitzvah, the incredible law of welcoming guests into their home. In the Midrash, which are stories about stories in the Bible, it is told that Abraham's tent was open on all four sides. This allowed Abraham to let any passing stranger know that he or she was a potential guest. Also, Abraham could see people in all directions. He could then go out from his tent and offer them food, drink, and a place to rest. Jewish couples recreate this tent at every wedding to reimagine themselves as the first ever Jewish couple, opening their homes as a sign of hospitality. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, Always be eager to practice it. Hey, do you need to remember? Every time you see a word in red, you're supposed to read. So let's try one more time. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Let me ask you, what does hospitality mean to you and how can you show hospitality? Well, take two minutes to share your thoughts with those around you.
Israel, hospitality was not merely a question of good manners, but a moral institution. Biblical law specifically sanctified hospitality toward this stranger, who was to be made particular welcome, for you were strangers in a strange land. Leviticus 19.34 the Bible is replete with examples of pious hospitality. As soon as Abraham saw the three men of Mary from far, he hurried to invite them into his house, ministered to their physical comfort, and served them. Genesis 18. Similarly, Laban was eager to welcome Abraham's servant while Rebekah attended to the comfort of his camels. Genesis 24, 28 to 32. Jethro the Midianite was particularly disappointed at being deprived of the opportunity to extend hospitality to Moses. Manoah did not allow the angel to depart before he had partaken of his hospitality. The Shunammite woman had a special room prepared for the prophet Elisha, 2 Kings 4, 8-11. The extreme to which hospitality was staked is shown by the stories of Lot and the old men of Giba, who were prepared to sacrifice the honor of their daughters in order to protect their guests who were to then complete strangers, Genesis 19, 4 and 8, to 8, and Judges 19, 23 to 24. What about the New Testament? In his book, Entertaining Angels, Early Christian Hospitality, in its Mediterranean setting, Andrew argues that sometimes we don't realize how hospitality permeates and is the background of the New Testament writings and accounts. Jesus is frequently found in meals because someone extended an invitation to him. Jesus is expected hospitality from the Samaritan woman at the well and from Zacchaeus. The practice of hospitality was seen as Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Apostle Peter offers hospitality and accepts hospitality from Gentiles in Acts 10. Paul accepts hospitality from Lydia and the Philippian jailer in Acts 16, being welcomed into their respective houses and eating with them. The reality is that if you read the New Testament through the lens of hospitality, you see it everywhere. Take your Bible now and read some Bible verses about hospitality in the New Testament. Share your finds and thoughts with those around you.
the motivation for hospitality has at least two main principles. The first one that I, I would like to present is the Imago Dei. Amy Olden, in the book And You Welcome Me, a source book on hospitality and early Christianity, claims that all humans bear the Imago Dei, the image of God. Therefore, we have the notion of common humanity of brothers and sisters, and the church as God's household. So, we should be hospitable to each other. The second principle for being hospitable is because our God is a hospital God. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. G.C. Campbell Morgan used to ask the question, what kind of host is God? He gives his best lavishly, with pure delight. He spreads his table bountifully. These are the lines on which our hospitality must proceed. More than any of the churches of the New Testament era, the Antioch church understood and embraced hospitality and should be a model for us today. Why do I say that? Three main reasons led me to such a conclusion. First, in Antioch, for the first time, the gospel message was presented publicly to Gentiles. They welcomed not only Jews, but also Gentiles. However, some of the believers who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Cyrene began preaching to the right, Gentiles about the Lord Jesus. We are all created in God's image. Therefore, we are brothers and sisters and welcomed to the God's house. The Antioch church was an unwelcoming church. The second reason for my beliefs about the hospital nature of the Antioch church is the welcoming and acceptance of Saul. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching large crowds of people. We don't have doubts today about the great contribution that the Apostle Paul has provided to Christianity, but sometimes we don't realize the rough beginning that he faced in Christianity. After his conversion from persecutor and murder of Christians to a Christian himself, many believers and even the apostles questioned his sincerity and transformation and were afraid of him. For some circumstances, Saul was forced to leave Jerusalem and for some time was by himself until Barnabas showed up and brought him into the community of believers in Antioch. Some theologians argue that Paul was not completely embraced by the Christian leaders of Jerusalem church until he came back from the first missionary trip and went to Jerusalem to resolve a major issue described in Acts 15. In his own words, Paul writes, And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand off, fellowship to Barnabas and me that we should go to Gentiles and they were to the circumcised. Barnabas realized with his own eyes that the community of Antioch was a hospitable church and he went for Saul because he knew that Saul would be welcomed in Antioch. 
The third reason of my personal convictions that Antioch Church is a model of hospital church for us today is that every time Paul would finish one of his trips, he would come back to Antioch and stay there for some time before he would go out for his next mission. For instance, returning from his first missionary trip, the Bible says that Paul stayed there in Antioch with the believers for a long time. Usually, we don't go back to places that we are not welcomed. And if for some reason we need to go back, we try to stay as less as possible there. Not a long time. Antioch was a welcoming church, a hospital community. My question for you is, how can our church be more like Antioch? How can we be more hospitable? Take this time to think and share your thoughts with those around you. It was in Antioch that the disciples were, for the first time, called Christians. Being a such a hospitable and welcoming community, the believers reflected Jesus in a way that they were considered little Christs. In other words, Christians. Let's be Christians. Let's exercise our hospitality. Let's be like Christ. Let's be like the Antioch Church. Let's be the church, loving and serving.